Hey, uh, welcome to uh, another one of my book videos. And, um, okay, so I spent a lot of time with the video. I was talking about it too often. Have, the, have you not been able to hear me? The wind's blowing pretty good. Uh, it's about 45, 48 degrees. Um, I just thought it'd be nice to do a video outside. So, But the wind's probably going to get in my way. So I'm going to do it quick. I really wanted to uh, do a review of this book. Uh, Paris 1919 by uh, Margaret McMillan and uh, it's oh god about 500 or so pages and I got it in paperback which is actually good quality very good quality actually I think um, cost about $16 which is important because you know for a cheap guy like me it's nice to get a good book for a cheap price this came out in 2003, you know, won, won a couple of awards, and um, I'm a big history guy, like we talk about in some of my other videos, and I got this book because, just my preference, I'm, I'm into a lot of history stuff, but I'm into a lot of cause and effect stuff, so, like, one of the most fascinating things to me is to read about the, the things that cause major conflicts. Like, uh, I'm really big on the prequel stuff to before the Civil War, what, what everything that happened to lead up to the Civil War. And another huge one for me, and it's been this way since junior high, I've always been fascinated with World War One, And I always seemed to focus, when I was growing up anyway, that World War Two was the big one that everybody talked about. World War One for me was always fascinating. And um, as I started reading more about it, I, I, I wasn't as interested so much in the battles and what happened during the war so much as things that happened before the war, and that always caught a lot of my attention. But um, sometimes after the war, the things that happened after a war, you know, caught my attention a little bit too, and um, I was really interested when I saw this book, that this whole book, 500-something pages, was devoted all to the Paris Peace Treaty that was signed in 1919 between the Allied powers and the um, Central powers, and all the different countries that were involved and so forth, and I uh, went through it and uh, bought it and read it. I gotta tell you, is there any, I mean, do I have any issues with it? I mean, sure, there's some dry spots in it. There's a good amount of dry stuff in there, but she, I think she was trying to really put out a lot of information. She spent a good amount of time talking about individual personalities of different world leaders. Uh, and she actually goes through all, many of them. We're talking like all the, all the countries in Europe, pretty much, you know, pretty much. I mean, Germany, England, France, or Great Britain, France, uh, Italy, Romania. Austrian countries, when I say Austrian countries, the Austro-Hungarian countries that came after it, and um, the Balkans, Turkey, China, Japan, Russia, what was turned into the Soviet Union, uh, United States, even, um, I believe it even talks about Brazil a little bit, I'm not 100% on that, it's, unfortunately it's been about a month or so since I read it, and I do lose some stuff, but um, it goes through all, the, all that, uh, and it goes through all the feelings that all these leaders were having during the conferences, how, how they had all these people there, but there was really a group of ten that really made most of the decisions, and then at the end it was a group of four. And um, like I said, it gets into a lot of the personalities of the four actually that you see here on the cover. Uh, Lloyd George, I can't pronounce his name, Clement, Clement. And then you got uh, Woodrow Wilson and Orlando from Italy, who isn't on this picture. Like I said, it's, 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 I, I was interested because it talked about what happened after, and it actually even talks about how her opinion of how that related to the start of World War II, which I actually, I'm not going to give it away, but actually I thought was very interesting, um, her conclusion of that. It surprised me a little bit, but it was very interesting. And um, I'm actually using it for reference on some other stuff I'm doing. Uh, basically a well-written book, in my opinion. It wasn't too lofty. Not a, well, I know, I'm, reasonably educated, but not, you know, I'm a doctor, right? and, uh, but I think, actually, I think this book would be a good textbook for a uh, history class, and the way it's broken up, and initially when you read it, it's not broken up chronologically, it is, and it isn't, she does a very good job with that, actually, it actually ends up being chronological, but when you're reading it, you're thinking, it isn't, she goes through certain things, certain countries that happen at certain times, and when you look back at it, it kind of does flow that way, so, and because of that, and because, you know, was it, was it the most fascinating book I've ever read? No. But, boy, it was free. It was definitely worth the $16. And if I had gotten it earlier and gotten a hard, hard book, 
<laughs> the hardcover, I would have gotten it, but for now, I'm good with this. It'll probably last many years. Excellent book. And actually, it's encouraged me to get her next book in relation to this. Uh, the War That Ended Peace just came out last year. This is 2014, so it came out in 2013, I believe. The Road to 1914. Uh, I'm not reviewing this book right now because I'm only in a chapter one. <laughs> but it is very similar in... Um, in tone to the Paris 1919, so uh, there are some dry spots, and she does talk about a lot of particulars about the characters she's dealing with, and maybe I don't appreciate it as much when I'm reading it as I do at the end, I guess, it's the best way to put that. So Paris 1919, uh, for any history students out there, it's a must-have. I gotta say it, I'll say it, I'm sorry about the wind. Uh, New England weather changes every few minutes. <laughs> um, it's a must-have book for any history student, serious history student, or even students history that just like it casually but want to know more information. This pretty much explains everything about the end of World War One to me. So I would I would recommend it to anybody who likes history and characters of history. Very good book. So uh, thanks for watching, and uh, I look forward to finishing your next one, uh, which actually the next one caters more to my initial love of history, the cause and effect kind of thing. So uh, I'm looking forward to getting into that a little more, and uh, thanks for watching.